Our goal is to determine all branch currents using mesh analysis. Just like before, we'll break it down step by step, following the same strategy. This circuit features two voltage sources, one independent, just like we saw earlier, and the other a dependent voltage source, which adds an interesting twist. Unlike an independent voltage source with a fixed voltage, a dependent source varies based on another quantity in the circuit. In this case, its voltage is 2x, meaning it's exactly twice the voltage across this resistor. We'll walk through the entire process in eight simple steps. Our mission is straightforward. Apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to each loop or mesh and solve for the current flowing in each one. That's it. Time to roll up your sleeves and jump into the loops. Mesh analysis might sound a bit intimidating at first, but once you see it broken down, it's really just like following a recipe, only for circuits. And hey, if you want a full deep dive, I've linked our complete mesh analysis video in the description below. Let's start solving. First up, label the voltage across each component. The voltage sources are already labeled, so we'll label the voltages across the resistors as V1, V2, and V3. That wraps up step one. Moving on to step two, Identify the meshes and assign current directions. Remember, meshes are the smallest loops in the circuit, and in this case, we've got two of them. Each one will get its own KVL equation. Now it's time to assign mesh current directions. While the direction is totally up to us, I'll go with the standard clockwise direction for both. It's consistent, neat, and makes the math a whole lot easier later on. Now it's time to label the current directions for the power sources. For voltage sources, current always flows out from the positive terminal. And just for reference, if we had current sources, we'd simply follow the direction of the arrow. But in this circuit, we're only dealing with voltage sources, so I've labeled the currents flowing outward from their positive sides. Simple, clear, and ready for the next step. Now let's identify the voltage rises and drops based on our mesh current directions. For power sources, here's the rule. If the current flows with the mesh current, it's a voltage rise. If it flows against it, it's a voltage drop. Resistors, on the other hand, are always voltage drops, no exceptions. Starting with mesh 1, the current through the voltage source flows in the same direction as the assigned mesh current so that's a voltage rise. The resistors, as always, cause voltage drops. When we look at mesh two, we notice something important. The current through the dependent voltage source flows opposite to the direction of the assigned mesh current. That means this source should be labeled as a voltage drop, not a rise. And as always, resistors are voltage drops too. So in this mesh, Every component contributes a drop. There are no voltage rises at all. This step is absolutely crucial. Mixing up a rise and a drop can throw off your entire KVL equation, leading you straight to the wrong answer. So slow down, check your current directions carefully, and make sure you've labeled everything correctly before moving forward. Now we're ready to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, starting with mesh one. As we loop around, we see a voltage rise of 9 volts from the source and two voltage drops across the resistors, V1 and V3. So the equation becomes 9 volts equals V1 plus V3. Moving on to mesh 2, this loop has no voltage rises. Every component here contributes a drop. We've got the dependent voltage source labeled 2x plus drops across V2 and V3. So the KVL equation for mesh 2 is 0 volts equals 2x plus V2 plus V3. And that gives us our two core equations, one from each mesh. Keep them clean, double-check your signs, and these will form the backbone of solving the entire circuit. Now it's time to express the resistor voltages using Ohm's law, V equals IR. This step is usually straightforward unless you're dealing with shared resistors between two meshes. In that case, you have to use the difference between the two mesh currents, and here's the key. 
Always put the current from the mesh you're analyzing first in the subtraction. So starting with mesh 1, V1 becomes I1 times 5 ohms. Nice and simple. But V3 is across a resistor shared with mesh 2. So we write it as I1 minus I2 times the resistor value. Always put the current from the mesh you're analyzing first. Now we can simplify the equation like this. Moving on to mesh 2, the process stays the same. V2 is straightforward, just I2 times 3 ohms. But when we get to V3, which is shared between both meshes, we can't simply copy the expression from mesh 1. Since we're now analyzing mesh 2, we have to flip the order of the subtraction. V3 becomes I2 minus I1 times the resistance. That flip is crucial. Always make sure the current from the mesh you're analyzing comes first in the expression. It's a small detail, but getting it right keeps your signs accurate and your final solution correct. Now we can simplify the equations using the expressions we just plugged in. And just like that, we've wrapped up step six. Paying close attention to current direction in shared components might seem like a small detail, but it's a deal breaker for getting the right answers. Step seven, make sure you've got enough equations to solve for all your unknowns. Let's count the unknowns. Here, I1, I2, and here we have X, I2, and I1. So totally, we have three unknowns, I1, I2, and X. Now let's count our equations. We've got two KVL equations, one from each mesh. That's two equations for three unknowns. Not enough. To fully solve the system, we need a third equation, and that's where the dependent source relationship comes in. We'll start by expressing the control variable X. Since X is the voltage across of this resistor, we can apply Ohm's law. Looking at that resistor and following the polarity given, current flowing from positive to negative, we see that X is equal to the current through the resistor times its resistance. And since the resistor is shared between mesh 1 and mesh 2, the current is I1 minus I2, and the resistance is 2 ohms. So we get X equal to 2 times I1 minus I2. That gives us the third equation we need. And now we've got a complete system ready to solve. Finally, it's time to solve the simultaneous equations and find the mesh currents. Here are our equations, and now it's time to solve them. First, I'll substitute the expression for x into equation 2. From that, we get a new relationship. i2 is negative 2i1. That's our fourth equation, an extra piece of the puzzle. Now I'll plug this i2 expression back into equation 1, replacing all i2 terms with minus 2i1. Solve that. And boom, we get I1 is 0.82 amperes. With I1 known, we substitute it back into our fourth equation, and that gives us I2 is negative 1.64 amperes. And just like that, we've found the mesh currents. Now let's interpret the results. I2 current flows in mesh 1. That means from the 9 volts independent source, I1 comes out, which is 0.82 amperes flows out, matching our assigned direction. But I2 came out negative, which tells us the actual current flows opposite to the direction we originally assigned. In other words, the current flows out of the positive terminal of the dependent voltage source, just like we expect from a power supplying element. Mesh analysis complete.